Welcome to this episode number 27 of your next trade called Today 2017 Vibes. So last week we already uh, started to discuss uh, realized volatility and how over the last few weeks and months both the implied volatility and the realized volatility for stocks have been on the way down. So we know that the VIX now is trading around 16 to 17%. And um, last week we look at the realized vol uh, volatility, the 10 days realized volatility for the S&P, which was hovering around 10%. Um, as of yesterday, uh, it is at 8.5%. Uh, and there has been um, some talks in the market and actually trading the market on a daily basis. I can tell you, that there is a feel that we are getting closer to what happened in 2017. What happened in 2017, if we look at that chart of the SPY for the uh, S&P ETF, is we had very low volatility. So if we look first at the 10 days realized volatility, it was trading between 2% and 14%, the top at 14%. So these days we are trading around 8.5%, so around this level. So there are still margins for volatility to go lower, but that tells you uh, that still we are trading in low realized volatility. That is why the VIX, for instance, is not the best instrument to be looking at how the market is behaving. Um, and uh, as of Monday, there will be a new every day a daily VIX that has been introduced by the CBOE uh, to be uh, traded. But in other words, that tells you that um, selling volatility over the last three months since the start of the year has been a very uh, um, gainful trade, really working very well. So on one hand, market participants will be selling volatility and that means the equity market will be going higher. And in 2017, that is something that happened over the whole year. Uh, so actually quite a bad year for me in terms of trading. Um, and the reason was uh, at that time, many um, volatility um, uh, structuring from Asian uh, market participants mostly. Uh, so they had a tendency and they were building building products where they were selling the volatility. Um, and you can see that really that's what has been happening over the last uh, few weeks and months. And uh, now the question is, are we going to have such an environment for longer, uh, which is normally happening when you're going to have when you have active QE. Uh, that was the case in 2017. And obviously, with what the uh, Fed has been doing three weeks ago with the regional banks, there is a questioning of, you know, are we in the same environment of QE, despite the talk of we are still doing quantitative tightening. And, and that creates really a feel that, um, you know, everything is fine, that there is visibility in the market, that the economy is doing pretty well. Uh, so are we going to have another 2017, another nine months of, of nothing? Let's look now at, at how first, you know, how the, the assets have been performing so far for the year. So the picture is more or less the same as it was as of last week, which is, you know, stocks pretty strong, uh, double digit for the for the NASDAQ here, 15%, the Euro stocks for Europe um, outperforming the overall market and one of the uh, biggest winners for the year. If you look at currencies, uh, so the dollar has been weakening by roughly 2 to 3% versus the most currencies. Uh, so that has been the talk of, you know, is it the end of the... Uh, dollar, um, the king dollar. I think there is still a long way to go, but uh, based on the very strong position that uh, the dollar had so far, it's not um, it's not unreasonable to think that uh, its market share overall could be uh, coming down. That doesn't mean this is the end of the U.S. dollar. Crypto. Uh, so the risk on that we had since since January is full on on the crypto world. Uh, Fifty three percent for Ethereum and sixty five percent for Bitcoin. Actually, what is interesting is not the gold, which is the old school uh, for the for the crypto. Uh, I'm more interested in, in WTI, uh, which is uh, a small down for the year. Actually, we had a couple of weeks ago the OPEC uh, reducing production by 1 million to 1.5 billion and um, uh, WTI has been struggling to go above the 83 levels and it's now trading below 80. So that tells you that the demand slash how the world is growing is not that strong. And it's the same with the copper, only up 4.4%, 4 4 sorry. Um, and if we look even more at the week to date asset performances, which is here, looking at both the WTI and copper, you can see that for this week, uh, those two were coming down. So that tells you a bit of um, 
obviously how the dollar has been behaving, uh, but not only uh, that the um, the growth coming from China is probably not as strong as expected. Um, so, and that is a confirmation that services around the world are very, very strong, but manufacturing are not that strong. And that's something that we're going to be covering with the PMI, the flash PMIs that we had this week. Overall, uh, market not moving that much in terms of for the stocks, um, equities, uh, flattish for the both the S&P and the NASDAQ. Um, if we look at the year to that industry performance, the story is still the same semiconductors which are the the top winners and the regional banks with what happened in march obviously at the end of, and the other end of the spectrum sorry bank um, strong uh, uh, weak sorry snp which is around here so you see that there you have more uh, losers than winners, uh, more uh, um, underperformers than outperformers. The reason is pretty clear, which is um, the market is very much driven by very few names. So if you look at the 25% of the names, which are, you know, the, the FANG, the, the Facebook, the Amazon, the, the, the Meta of this world, they have been outperforming the overall market, putting the market higher. But if you do the same with an equal weight, um, an equal market weight actually uh, the the s p is not that strong so what about on a week to date industry performance the gaming very strong healthcare uh, home home builders uh, so this is really the, the interesting one so we had some some good numbers from one of the home builders that was on thursday uh, some breakout the um, uh, uh, let's say the um, the appetite for home builders a uh, couple of months ago was pretty low uh, based on the NAHB numbers, the the overall picture and the, the yields going higher. Uh, despite that, home builders have been very very strong. Uh, so that I think that has been taking a, a lot of people out uh, of sight, um, and that tells you that positioning is always very important, and uh, that is something that I'm still learning. Uh, looking at some of my positions, unfortunately. Other end of the spectrum, metals, minings, uh, weak. We got telco as well. So we got why telco are down that much. Uh, we got at and it was on Thursday, uh, down 10%. So at and big cap, obviously, uh, big uh, balance sheet with a lot of debt on the balance sheet. So those are the things that we should be monitoring uh, because the uh, the defensive, some of the defensive sectors um, have been struggling uh, due to earnings. Yeah, to that sector performances, the the losers. So we got healthcare, financials, utilities, and energy. Uh, other end of the spectrum, IT, telco doing very well. Consumer discretionary, same as last week. Here, the telco. So again, this is mostly AT and T down ten percent for the week. Energy, why? Because uh, oil uh, WTI went from eighty three to seventy eight dollars. But interestingly. If we look at the winners for this week, so we got real estate, we got financials, utilities, and consumer staples. So we got some defensive. Okay, so defensive actually have been doing pretty well over the last month or so. Uh, so very much tells you um, uh, when the defensive do well at the end of a rally, uh, that tells you the positioning is more and more cautious. Um, so market is is waiting for the next uh, uh, triggers for the next drivers, but really those defensives have been uh, doing uh, better than than the overall market. So if you look at the SP, the S and P, that will be here. What about the rates now? So looking at the U.S. ten years first, this is the uh, in terms of yield. So we are around 3.6%. percent. If you look at that chart again, same is similar to last. Uh, Last weekend, um, this is you know uh, low um, low level on the on the yields. I don't like to do a chart on the yields, but you know the three. I will say that the three point two percent, three point three percent on the ten years are important level. As long as we are trading above, I think there is no change in the market. And the ten years versus the two years is still negative, uh, which we know is a good leading indicator for a recession coming. The hard part is. Very often, it takes a long time uh, to uh, translate into uh, a recession. We are talking, I think, uh, looking at the 4x4 video series on top of my head, that was something like 18 months uh, between the moment it, it inverts and uh, we go into a recession. Now, uh, SOFR, which is, you know, the new euro dollar, in other words, um, looking at what the market is expecting from the Fed, we know that the Fed will be cutting rates on the 3rd of May, so that will be... Not this Wednesday, but Wednesday in 10 days, uh, we are expect the market is expecting 25 bips. Um, after that, 
there might be a small 25 bips in um, roughly in June, but that's that I think it's going to be the top in in May or, or, or roughly, which something that was priced uh, four or five months ago to have like a, a, a peak rate around around um, June. But there is a huge divergence between what the market is expecting after June. Okay, so from June to December here, yeah, we go from 94 to 91 to 94. 9448 which is roughly uh, 60 points so 60 points is similar to what we had last week so market is expecting two to two and a half 25 bips red cut uh, between June and December and on the other end uh, the Fed is telling us no no we're not going to be cutting rates too quickly because inflation is still too high and we need to be careful not to have a second wave of inflation so Divergence between what the market is pricing, what the Fed is saying, and what is interesting, and as we underlined last week, is we start to see the Fed saying to um, investors that there's going to be a recession in H2, or at least, you know, this is what they start to be pricing. When you have a recession, you know, it, you never know what you're going to have. If you're going to have a mild recession or you're going to have a, a, a terrible recession. What about the VIX? Volatility. So volatility keeps on coming down. Not that much, but, you know, 16.89% from 17%. So we are trading into the 16% handle, handle, which tells you that the market is pricing a 1% move roughly on the S&P with a 95% chance of happening every single day. Uh, the VIX, VIX uh, term structure pretty much the same but if we look at the nine days for the VIX everything is trading uh, trending lower um, so kind of uh, uh, not kind but uh, you know lower volatility if you look at history the VIX uh, since 1991 has been trending around 19% so we are below this 19% threshold um, if we look at shorter volatility which is a better indicator these days because more and more market participants are, are playing those one day two days weekly options so we know that daily options are making 50 to 60% of the options these days um, and as I said, there is a CBOE. Uh, the CBOE will be launching a VIX index contract on uh, Monday. Um, and again, you know, it's not because you have low inflation, uh, sorry, low VIX, low volatility that the volatility can't go lower. What is important to keep in mind is yesterday we got the option expiry, um, and on on Wednesday we got the VIX expiry. Very often. As those positions, when you get expiry, the contracts obviously are maturing, and this is the moment for those positions to restart. With the earnings coming, um, if you look at 2017, the market was very friendly in um, in the uh, economic expectations. When the economic expectations are that low, um, are, are that like easy to to forecast or easier to forecast, that explains a lot. You know. Uh, 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 investors being confident and having a 10 12 percent uh, VIX. Now these days there is much more uncertainty between you know the the US economy restarting a bit with the ISM and 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 uh, or the PMI flash that we had uh, yesterday and more uncertainty. So actually there is uh, what the market has been pricing over the last couple of months is less uncertainty. Um, is it right or wrong? You make a decision. I would still want to believe that this is uh, the wrong decision, but you know, in terms of price action, I've been uh, wrong. So let's look now at as always looking at how the, the um, uh, different uh, asset classes have been doing starting with the S&P looking at the future so uh, the 4200 has been a, a, an important level um, and and you can see this um, um, those uh, those trend which very often it breaks below after the expiry so the question everyone is looking at the same looking at the option expiry unfortunately I want to believe that when everyone is looking at the same thing it's not going to happen so the trend that started um, beginning of March uh, when the the, uh, the Fed intervened with the original banks is still ongoing. If you look at the Nasdaq, we have been consolidating for now for 10 days. Uh, the Russell is more or less the same, long consolidation, similar Russell versus the, the Nasdaq, very much the same picture. Emerging market slash China not doing as much or as well as the other indexes, which I think goes hand in hand with both 
the CL1, which stands for WTI or the oil, and copper. So those two have been quite weakish in the big picture of, you know, the world is going to get better. Um, my short is still doing awful, which is, you know, being short Europe, making new highs. Uh, the chart looks uh, still pretty good. So I think I'm going to be suffering a bit more, even if on the euro stock, I think we are close to very important level. Finally, a bit of currencies, uh, euro dollar, the trend is, is, is very much the same so far, you know, it's, it's something, uh, so there is strong correlation uh, between asset classes, um, but I think looking at the chart actually of, I mean, there is a debate if this is an, if there are assets or not, looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, the crypto world, um, there has been a bit of a risk off from the highs, um, so some part of the market is 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 not as strong as before um, and as i mentioned if we do uh, the uh, defensive sectors versus the snp they have been doing better they have been outperforming which very much tells you that uh, uh, recently the new positioning have been going for for defensive as always be looking for be, uh, look at the the stocks that will be uh, coming with earnings this week. So this week we got Amazon. Uh, the chart to, doesn't look that bad. So obviously I'm going to be completely wrong. Um, and I don't put position before the earnings. So this is important for you, for you to know. Uh, we got Amazon, we get Meta and some others. So do a bit of, um, as always, you know, uh, um, looking at the charts of, of stocks that will come into the market this week. What about this week? What happened for the week? So I wanted to go with, with this long chart of the, so that's for the S&P futures over the last five sessions. And here, this is the 4150 uh, level. So as I said, uh, on the Discord community on Thursday and Friday, that was pretty clear that the market was pinned into this 4150. Uh, nothing is really happening. And actually, if you think about the, the, the move from the highs to the lows here, we are talking roughly um, 50, 60 points, which is 60 points is 1.5%. And guess what was priced? If you watch last week video, if you look at what was the catalyst for the week, we were saying that looking at the at the money straddled, we're uh, pricing roughly 1.4%. So what has been happening is anyone and so far, okay, who has been selling those uh, straddle uh, and selling this volatility has been making money and each time we are uh, uh, reaching those 1.5 percent let's say for this week um, the market has been uh, selling volatility uh, so clearly uh, uh, volatility compression is uh, um, you can see this volatility compression into assets and with the S&P so now OPEX is done. So OPEX was done for the future here and for the for the SPY ETF at the close. Um, so now there is a chance that actually the, the, the market could move a bit more. There is a bit more freedom. Let's see how it's gonna how it's gonna play out. In terms of of um, of macro, uh, looking at the flash PMIs that was as of yesterday. So we had a picture that was more or less the manufacturing. So if we look at the manufacturing, Japan, uh, the French one, the German ones uh, were below the forecast. And actually anything that has been services um, has been better. So the, the economy is, is, is not that easy to read. So if you think about the economy in developed market, uh, they are very much uh, uh, weighted around services and services have been doing very well and are doing better uh, months on months and on the other end of the spectrum manufacturing is not doing that well and and they are getting closer to uh, at least for the US recession level which is the for the ISM manufacturing around the the 42 percent but um, for the time being, what we've seen as of yesterday is both the flash manufacturing PMI and flash services in the US have been doing better. So picture from the US, better services, better manufacturing. So that gives you a bit of not recession coming uh, 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 in the next three months. As I said before, it's it, the chances are H2 um, and a bit of, uh, of, of more uh, relief from the market in terms of, of, um, of growth. But... The other end of the spectrum, if, if there's, there is still a, a strong growth, uh, we're not going to have a fed, a fed that will be pivoting that soon. And there is a risk that uh, inflation could be picking up. So that's the second point for the week. 
Um, as I said, life after the OPEX, so that will be from here. We'll see if we're going to have more volatility when I'm talking about life. Finally, looking at the earnings, so this is for the S&P earnings. So, so far, uh, it's still a, a very small sample, which is, you know, 87 stocks out of uh, 500. Um, uh, but what we had so far is the, er are the earnings have been uh, way above, okay, Sales not that way above the expectation. So on average, if you look historically, we are above in terms of companies that are beating the expectation. That is something that I flagged a couple of weeks ago, or three weeks ago, which was pretty clear that as we lowered expectation from December to March by 6% from the EPS, it was quite easy. It is still easy for companies to beat. But the sample is small and keep in mind that what we had so far is mostly the big banks. But what is the translation in terms of price action, which is here? You can see that most companies have been doing well on the day of the earnings. So price reaction, okay, you're going to give me one example and say, okay, let's say Alcoa was, was not doing well, AT&T was struggling. Yes, yeah, you're going to have some names that will be struggling, but most of the names, you know, the Schwab, the STLD yesterday uh, reacted pretty well. So strong price action at least uh, over the last uh, uh, week, which, may, which made 20% of the S&P roughly. So going into the catalyst, catalyst, we are still looking at what could ap be happening next. The first thing first is we don't have any Fed speakers for the week and we don't have anyone from the Fed talking until next Wednesday uh, in 10 days time, which is going to be the FOMC uh, um, conference. Why? Because the Fed is in blackout period, so they are not allowed to talk to the market. So don't expect anyone to talk. The biggest driver is obviously here, which are the earnings, where we're going to have 175 S&P companies, as I said, is going to have some Meta, we're going to have some Amazon and some others. So you have some of the names in here, Juniper, uh, PayPal, um, Charter, SLB, so tons of them. And it's making roughly 41% of the market value of the S&P, with the two big days being Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, keeping in mind that it's uh, before hours and after market, so a, a, a bit of both. Uh, so that's the thing that, that we should be looking in terms of drivers for the for the earnings. Uh, then what we have in terms of, of economics, we have some of the uh, uh, Fed ISM, the local uh, um, leading indicator with the Chicago, Chicago uh, and the Dallas Fed. We're going to have some German numbers, uh, but more importantly, really the big numbers will be on Thursday with the uh, Q1 GDP. And then we're going to have the Chicago PMI on Friday and the Bank of Japan uh, red decision. So I think, you know, the market in terms of of um, of the of um, uh, of uh, um, data coming. So yeah, I, I should have been putting here. I didn't put it, which is uh, on the more important uh, number that is here, which is going to be the PC. So on Friday we got inflation. I don't know why I forgot, but uh, PC is the is even more important than than the CPI. Uh, so Friday is the big day with with Thursday in terms of macro, um, in terms of of. Why Friday is important as well, looking at the Bank of Japan, you know or you don't know that the Bank of Japan changed its governor. Uh, so there have been questions of, you know, are they going to change their very accommodative uh, policy? So far, not much of a change. But if, if they do, it's going to be a big change, obviously, and have a lot of reper repercussions across asset classes. So that will be something to look at on, on Friday morning if, if you are in Europe. And finally... One of the drivers that I've been mentioning uh, in terms of consolidation, looking at the S&P and everything, is looking at the FANG, which is you know the Facebook, Amazon, um, Microsoft, Google versus the S&P. We have some earnings this week. We know that, again, that the market has been very much driven by very few names, uh, and that doesn't mean that it's not going to uh, uh, keep on going. So... We are not light on, on catalysts, we are a bit light on, on in terms of macro catalysts, but uh, companies are, are, are super important. Um, hopefully, uh, if you look at the, at the earnings call, if you look at the drivers, always start from the, from the biggest um, uh, companies of each sectors to give you some color about what, what has been the trend. So 
This is, and finally, sorry, the, the straddle looking at what the market is pricing in terms of the move on the S&P. So this week we had 1.4% move, which is exactly the same uh, move that we had on the real eye. So here this is, when we look at weekly straddle, this is implied vol. And we had realized vol of roughly 1.4%. The realized vol for the month of April for the S&P uh, is at the lowest level since 2017. So this is why, again, it feels very much like, you know, the 2017 vibes. We are still pricing 1.4% for this week. So very little moon, 1.4% on the S&P out of uh, 4,000 points. That gives you 56, 60 points. So that is not much. So uh, if we close that 4150, either you go to 4200 or uh, 4100. So that gives you this uh, 50 uh, points uh, lower or higher. And the market has been consolidating around this level. Next move is going to be and will be important. So this is it more for me for, for the week. Um, if you like what you, uh, you're watching, I think there are more and more uh, joining those, those videos. So that's, that is a good thing subscribe to the to the channel put some comments because that gives some traction um, and that's a good way for me to even get uh, more motivation uh, any questions that you had I had a lot of questions about around the mentoring recently um, so if you are interested in doing some mentoring, learning an investment process, if you're interested in learning through the 4x4 video series, or if you're keen on sharing ideas with some other traders, retail traders, uh, and some professional as well, uh, please join the uh, Discord community. And any question, you can DM um, directly to me, and that will be, uh, be brilliant. See you next week. Bye-bye.